Here we go. Gacha games are a dividing topic. Some people love them, some people hate them. Some argue the children are victims of the predatory practices. They are. While the opposition is full of child predators. When a normal person hears about any gacha game, they immediately write it off as a garbage, grindy, low effort, predatory, infant, mm -hmm. pay to win mobile game. Yeah. Yeah. And that saddens me because that's just not true. It's not pay to win at all. Gacha games are often claimed to be pay to win by people who don't play gacha games. But as someone with years of experience in some of the most popular gacha games out there, like Genshin Impact, mm -hmm. Fate Grand Order, Arknights, and Love Alive School Idol Festival, oh. which I won't mention ever again because I like to pretend I never played that game. I can tell you that not only are gacha games not pay to win, they are actually pay to lose. Whenever I am able to beat Maw of Chaos in Honkai Star Rail with autoplay, I consider that winning. I do. I think I'm winning. And it gave me a special items can be for that. As a game in which you pay to win. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, a, a real shocker, I know. A good example of a pay to win game is a game like FIFA, mm -hmm. specifically FIFA Ultimate Team. In case you haven't noticed from my low IQ sounding accent, I am in fact European, meaning that I was practically born with a football in my hands and therefore you have mean a soccer lot of experience ball? playing FIFA. Unfortunately, FIFA is a truly one of a kind game where you mean not soccer, only right? have to pay to play, but having a better team than your opponent gives you a significant advantage, yeah. meaning that you are incentivized to buy packs and spend more money, with some FIFA pros reportedly having spent over 27,000 real life dollars. That's it? Only for all of that to be entirely wasted when FIFA 69 comes out in you stores You gotta spend another $27,000. pay to win, because you don't pay at all. Gacha games are all based on the free-to-play model, where you can play for free and there's an optional in-game shop where you can buy in-game currency, which in turn can be used to summon new and often better characters. Oh. A game being, uh, like a game being buy to play doesn't mean that it can't be pay to win. So you're saying all free-to-play games aren't pay to win? I feel like they absolutely are. Like, is that any question? Isn't that literally the same thing I hear you yeah, say? Yeah, it is. Well, while you are technically correct, please don't forget that you are also technically retarded. FIFA Ooh. is a pay-to-win game because it's a PvP game, meaning that you are rewarded for stealing your mom's credit card by being able to beat your opponent, while gacha games are more often than not PvE games, meaning that gacha gamers, realistically speaking, are only capable of beating their meat. To JPEGs of underage girls. Gacha games are PvE games, otherwise known as single player games, meaning that if you can beat the story with the characters and currency you are given for- When you kill Bowser in Super Mario Brothers, you win the game, right? When you kill Ganon in Legend of Zelda, you also win the game. Everybody knows this. You may win the game, but if you have to pay for it, you might lose your life. That's true. For free, then there is no real incentive mm -hmm. to spend money at all. Can something really be pay to win when victory is almost guaranteed? Genshin Impact. Yes. Like, yes, without a doubt. It's not even a question. Absolutely. It's an incredibly easy game, to the point that you can easily complete the entire story without touching the gacha system at all. The only somewhat challenging... Oh, see, this is the problem. So this guy is a video gamer. You have to understand that, like, for a video gamer, Genshin Impact is easy. But for a mentally ill middle school girl, it is a trial of fire. So, of course, for him, it's going to be easy. Like, for me, like, Elden Ring was pretty easy, right? It was an easy game. Like, there's a few bosses that were tricky, for sure. Like, there's, like, five, I'd say, that were really hard. Other than that, game was a joke. Aspect of the that game. doesn't mean that the game is easy. What about Sekiro? Oh, that was a hard game. It was. Sure, Cap? No, I mean, go back, go back. Besides Moenia, Moog, the bird. Which other boss did I really spend more than, like, five times on? Maybe one more, right? Probably one more. Gravity? Yeah, that is it Margit? Uh, I tried to fight him with no gear, and then I came back and I one-tapped him. You had insane armor, though? So you're saying that 
I made my character good and I beat the boss? Well, I guess, I mean, that must be cheating, right? It must be cheating abyss, to use armor. Which is a completely optional mode. Since there is a time limit, yeah. the abyss definitely feels more like a DPS check than a skill check, mm -hmm. which is why it may feel like it incentivizes spending money on the game. But given that the three strongest characters in the game mm -hmm. are easily available four stars, and you are almost guaranteed to get at least one new five star every 75 pools or so, the abyss shouldn't pose much of a problem at all. You just need to understand the fundamentals of the game, like team building and artifacts, and rotation, and animation, and, and, and elemental formula, and energy and 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 reaction. Uh -huh. Arcrise is definitely a more challenging game. It's a tower defense game where every obtainable character has a unique playstyle and abilities. The game can almost feel like a puzzle sometimes, where not having been given the correct puzzle pieces can definitely make it more challenging. Not having either. I'm gonna be real. This isn't true. Because if you're bad at the game, you can get gear that will make the game easier. So, like, if it's 10% luck and 90% gear, you still hit 100%. You still get that. Like, even if you're garbage and you have nine gear carries you, you still win. Like, people have to work harder in order to achieve the same thing without the money. Not every game. or forms can make the game know. harder to beat, but it's definitely not impossible. You just have to think outside the box sometimes. Maybe try rearranging your units. Perhaps mm -hmm. give different units a shot. Or try looking it up on the internet. This guy on YouTube called Kyostin makes easy to follow guides on how to beat every stage with mostly 4 star characters. You can take inspiration from him or outright copy the entire strat like the rest of it. Easy. Some people even clear the extreme difficulty optional stages with 4 stars only. So what's stopping you? from beating the normal stages other than your single digit IQ. Well, that's your... the thing is that if you have a single digit IQ, but you have a quadruple digit bank account, then you're going to be able to beat it. But you have a single digit IQ and you don't have the bank account, then you can't beat it. And like, obviously you can get better at the game, but if you can spend money and achieve the same thing, then you've effectively created a shortcut for progression in the game which means that it's pay to win. That's just the way it is. Surplus of chromosomes. Not in Ark Knights? I don't know about Ark Knights. Or Fate Grand Order is somehow simultaneously the easiest and the hardest game of the free. Gameplay wise, FGO is definitely. This is really the game? This thing looks like fucking garbage. I remember Emaru said that she played this game and, uh,. She spent all of her spends on, like, a skeleton named Hassan, and then she didn't get him, and she quit the game. Now that I actually see the game, man, this looks like a real piece of shit. People spent money on this? <laughs> what? People gave this shit money? One of the games. Oh my ever god! Made. It somehow manages to combine extreme difficulty what? with the worst gacha rates of all time and extreme reliance on RNG, making FGO at times genuinely difficult. One could even say that FGO is kind of like the dark souls of gacha games. Is what uh -oh. I would say if there wasn't a literal press to win button that revives your entire party and gives them all 100% NP charge, like. Why? The only drawback being that it has a cooldown of 3 days, but given that the amount of truly mm -hmm. challenging stages are rather far and few between, the cooldown really isn't a big deal at all. Gacha games are not pay to win. At best, they are pay to win slightly faster, and at their worst, they are pay to win with 10% brain usage. And while making the that's the That's the thing, is that for some people, 10% brain usage is operating at maximum power. Like, that is full throttle. Like, moving at, you know, like, warp speed, maximum overdrive. It's it's like a, like a classic WoW player I could see would probably not be able to beat any of the... I would say probably a normal level 50 boss in Genshin Impact, a classic WoW player would probably struggle with. Like, level 50, level 60 boss. I, bro, there's no way they'd be able to do it. Not true? No, you haven't seen classic WoW players game easier may be fun to some people, I can guarantee that for the vast majority of people, spending mm -hmm. money makes the game less enjoyable, therefore making gacha games pay to lose. Hear me out, a gacha game can You know be who says this? People who don't have money and don't spend the money on the game. Mint pickers. 
Yeah, this is a mint picker mentality. A pay to win game because most gotcha poor people. Games no, poor. it's not poor people. Because poor people could easily spend money on this game. In fact, I bet poor people spend the most money on this game. <laughs> Why do you think they're poor? Because they make bad financial decisions. Are barely even games. 90% of the time, you are doing nothing yeah. but mindless farming, which in the case of Arknights can be done through autoplay. This mm -hmm. isn't even gameplay anymore. Whether it be gacha currency or level of materials, gacha games are fundamentally about resource management and planning. Which characters should you spend your currency on? Do I prioritize waifu or meta? Look at this screen. This is crazy. Oh my god, what is this? Which characters will allow me to clear the game and which characters will make my PP pee -pee hard? But also, which materials do I farm? Or which characters should I build? And in which order? There are no definitive answers to any of these questions. Your answer may vary depending on your preferred playstyle, your progress through the game, or the state of your account. Examples being, what other characters do you have to synergize with? Do you have a good weapon or craft essence to equip? Or do you already own a character that fulfills a similar role? All of these questions lead to everyone making different decisions decisions and progressing through the game in a way that is specific to them only. No to I recognize this character, I don't remember from where. ...accounts are the same, and being forced to make difficult decisions makes your account truly feel like it's yours. In a way, gacha games play like a massive roguelike, where the resources given or not given to you massively where? change the way you have to approach the game, resulting in a completely different experience for everyone, which creates this amazing sense of community. Okay. People understandably want to know which choice will be the best before making rash decisions, and want to know what choices other people have made. A trend like Genshin characters me and my friends own should be a completely Jesus. interesting video. Who the fuck are you and why should I care? Yet these videos are enjoyed by many people. People want oh to my know God. what choices the people around them have made. Ask two friends that play the same gacha game which characters the others own. And I'm sure they could give you a detailed description of their entire account. FGO was the most tweeted about game in 2017. 18 oh my God. What is this? I feel like people only continue to play gacha games because they can spend money in them. So, I think the reason why, like, for me, why would I play a game like Weathering Waves? Because I think the game plays well. I play games that play well. That's it. That's all I care about. Like, I, and that's why I put, like, I have... Like, I can auto-play Lucilius in Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Just AFK. It's not a big deal. That's how much I played the game. No, you can't. I literally did a video of it on stream. It's easy. You can? Is that fun? It is. Because I beat the fucking game. 19 and the runner up in 2020, with Genshin Impact taking the crown in 2021. And this is no coincidence. Gacha games are unrivaled in terms of forming a sense of community, yep. to the point that an old, ugly looking single player sprite RPG visual novel was more talked about than Fortnite in its prime. Jesus. But the moment you decide to bust out a credit card, you lose all of this. No decision holds any weight anymore. Managing your resources is unnecessary when you have infinite energy. Any form of strategy can be thrown out the window when you can brute force everything. And what is left? If I want strategy and skill, I'll play Elden Ring or Sekiro. Like, the truth is that all video games are designed to lose. Melania is programmed to die. Armored Core. That's right. Programmed to lose. An endless grind of farming. Mm -hmm. Is this really what you wanted? Gotcha games are not paid to win. Well, this is... The reason why I don't mind spending the money in the game, number one, is like, if I... If I didn't have the money, I wouldn't play the game. Like, number one. Like, I don't really give a shit. Like, I would only... Like, because why would I ever play a game like that if I didn't spend the money? I can write off my taxes. It doesn't really matter. 
Yeah, that's the real reason. And so, uh, but you didn't summon? Isn't that the same as not spending? Uh, no, because it, it's like it's easy. Like, you just beat it. Just get good. It's not a problem. But the reason why is because of Lost Ark. Because, like, you had these people that had the energy of, like, a four foot ten man that's trying to prove himself to everybody in the world. And they are these people that played Lost Ark 15 hours a day. And they were still worse than me. They would be worse than even an average whale. That's the reason why. You remember, like, there were people that were farming and grinding all day, every single day. And then Nick would log on in the morning, drop $2,000... And just invalidate their weeks of progress in seconds. It didn't even matter. And and whenever I saw that happen, and I saw the energy that they put into farming, I realized how silly it was. They were bad, worse than you? I was good at Lost Ark. The only reason why I was bad is I didn't play it a lot. I feel like I was fine. Like, of course I didn't play well. I didn't play as well as the people that are clearing, uh, what do you call it? The Guardian, or not Guardians, the uh, Legion Commander raids six times a week? Fuck no. I think I played pretty well for the amount of time that I, I was in the game. Yeah, I think I did fine. The RP to win slightly faster. Yes, spending money does make you win easier, mm -hmm. but you lose out on so much more. You lose the enjoyment, you lose the sense of community, you lose the sense of pride mm -hmm. or accomplishment. But most importantly, you lose a shit ton of money, like what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> the goal of a game is not always to win, it's about having fun. Mm -hmm. Someone who has never failed doesn't know what it's like to finally succeed. Oh, that's cool. Someone who has never been disappointed doesn't know how satisfying it can be. And someone with infinite chances doesn't know the feeling of finally beating the odds. Hidetaka Miyazaki, the creator of Dark Souls. I'm Dark the kind of person that, like, whenever I get into a gambling situation, I like to play things up for stream for fun, but I genuinely don't really care about the outcome. Because I understand statistics very, like, very, like, uh, internally. Like, I understand how numbers are. That's just how it is. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Dark Souls being kind of like the Dark Souls of video games, once yeah. said that his games are about accomplishment by overcoming tremendous odds. He says, We don't try to force difficulty or make mm -hmm. things hard for the sake That's of right. It. We want players to use their cunning, study the That's game, me, by the way. Memorize I do this. And learn from their mistakes. I do this. There is nothing more satisfying than overcoming great challenges. Yep. Yes, it may suck to try and try again. But it's all worth it in the end, because there is no greater elation than overcoming great adversity with nothing more than your own skill and determination. Mm -hmm. Playing for gacha games is like playing Dark Souls on easy mode, and nobody would want to do that. I did. Right? Right? Speaking of Dark Souls... Yo, if you're watching this video as it comes My out, goal every single time whenever I play a game is to not have to play the game. My goal is to stop playing the game as soon as possible. And so I want to create an autoplay situation in every single game. I consider this fun because I view it as a... It's like a puzzle. It's like a challenge to do. Because usually the game doesn't want you to do it. And it's not really as fun in games where you're supposed to do it. Because then I, I don't feel like I'm cheating. I like being able to play games and like, yeah, optimizing it. Exactly, yeah. Yeah, I like routinely exploiting and breaking games. That's right. Absolutely. Then I'll be playing Elden Ring about 13 hours from now. I'll go live here on YouTube and on Twitch at around 12 p.m. Central European time. I might just decide to stream the entire weekend since... I'll be playing anyway, but I haven't decided yet. Anyway, if you have nothing better to do, come say hi. A very special thanks to my patrons for supporting me, even though I don't upload very often. And yeah, that's basically it. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope to see you tomorrow. I'm gonna be real. I think that 
gotcha games are undeniably pay to win by any by any definition like it's not even a question that they're pay to win because you can spend money and make your character stronger so it's easier for you to win like it's undeniable now you can make the argument that it makes the game less fun but that's a subjective argument it is objective that it makes the game easier. I do feel like a lot of gotcha games are dying, and the reason why, uh, I, I think, is that the more games like this that get popular, I do think that people will kind of get tired of it, and they'll just want something new, I think. But I don't know if they're really all dying as much as there's just a lot more of them in the market. Whereas, like, with Genshin, Genshin was, like, the only gacha game in, like, the Western market that a lot of people were playing, I feel. That, like, you know, of, like, that style back then in, like, 2020. Whereas, like, now you have, like, massive saturation of the market. There's a huge, huge amount of them. I think Azure Lane is pretty much the only gacha game that has, that has good monetization. I mean, gacha games with good monetization, it's like, that's like an ethical serial killer, right? I mean, like, come on.